When I go to the grocery store, one of the things that I like to do is go to the longest line when I've got all my groceries. Now this seems counterintuitive because when you go to the grocery store, you're not sitting there trying to wait in line. You're trying to check out and go on about your day. Well, I actually use this as a meditation practice. Now I don't do this every time, but I do like to do it most of the time is find the longest line and sit there and observe my mind. Some of the times in the grocery line, I've had my best blissful moments ever because I'm just sitting there in pure presence. Because a lot of times when we go do what we're trying to do, that waiting feeling is causing us agitation because that when we get to where we're gonna go, it's gonna finally free us, it's gonna finally fill us. But every time we rush get to that destination that we think is gonna fulfill us, it always comes and goes and it can't ultimately fulfill you because it comes, gives us a quick hit of pleasure and then pass it. And sometimes it's even painful. Well, the other day I was in line and I was behind this girl in a electric cart. She was sitting in an electric cart and she puts her cart in and it gets declined. And the clerk goes, I'm sorry, ma'am, but your card is declined. And she sat there and she was like, I want to see your manager. And so the clerk who was frustrated went and got them. And I've been through this before where they've had to go get the manager and it takes a while. I decided not to wait. Now, I had to wait in logical terms of I couldn't check out. So there was a waiting period, but I'm talking about a psychological waiting. So what I did was I got out of line, I went and leaned on a wall, and I sat there with my music and looked up at the lights in the store and just went into it like a direct formless piece and was just sitting there in, in basically a nice solid bliss. I let them do their thing, wasn't frustrated whatsoever with the lady in front of me because I was not. Had I been in a psychological frame of I need to get out of this as quick as possible I would have been frustrated pain would have arisen in me and I would have been absolutely like agitated with the lady in front of me so what ended up happening is a few moments later it may have been like 10 to 15 minutes later I went and the lady or the clerk was frustrated because she said oh that lady in the wheelchair tried to blame it on me and there was yet another lesson to be learned there Thing that lady told the clerk was personal. It was all coming from her own trauma of needing to get through that line as quick as possible or needing her card to go through or whatever. The clerk took it personal and I asked her, I was, I was like, did that lady bother you? And she's like, yeah, she tried to blame it on me and say it was my fault that her card didn't go through. And that the clerk ended up going through a lot of pain for no reason. Had she realized that she wasn't a person, she would not have taken that personally and she wouldn't have knew that it was coming from the lady's own inner insecurity. And so a lot of this all has to do with that psychological time going on in our heads and the fact that we feeling of being a person is all related to that psychological time and that psychological waiting. Had we been able to step out of the personhood along with psychological time, which are basically the same thing in a nutshell, we would not take things so personally. We'd no longer be in an agitated state of waiting and thinking we need to get somewhere as quick as possible. And we could just sit here in this moment, bring our attention into the body, into the hands, observe the mind at the same time and just be at peace and not have this pain arise in us. And I kid you not, like that time in the store was just a brilliant moment, just a brilliant moment of showcasing to me yet again why freeing yourself from psychological time is going to set you free. But with that being said, that is just a story and it is very important that you don't build a, an identity uh, out of your stories. So for example, in my own case, that story is dead and gone and forever and it has nothing to do with my essential identity. Now it's easy to go through experiences that are pleasurable or where you feel like you had a lot of wisdom or insight or whatever the case is, but it's more important that you don't build that as a part of your identity so it doesn't yet again trap you in psychological memory and thus cause you pain because 
the times in your life where you had the greatest wisdom end up ultimately causing you more pain if you identify with them. Peace.